Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Daniel Livara. This is the second part of my presentation regarding biological control on two spot and strawberries. For all that matters, all berries, game berries, uh, as well as addressing common questions in regards to predatory mite releases. I'll start with the life cycle of the two spot. Uh, the eggs will overwinter on the transplants and will hatch when we have in the winter summer like temperature 75 degrees to high 50 percent lows with high hu relative humidity planting dates uh, people the growers who plant between october the first and the end of october will be the first ones to, that will experience uh, the first hatching of the first generation of the two spot and aggressive monitoring rates aggressive monitoring is required in order to time the first release of the predatory mites uh, I love I need we need to start releasing at 1% no more than 10% infection of two spider mites and normally I would start at December the middle of December with my releases on the, the strawberries that I, I take care of my rates are from 20,000 to 30,000 per acre unconventional and then the organic I I go the same but the cumulative total for conventional, I use between 800,000 to 100,000 per acre. And then the conventional, I will go up to 100,000 to 150,000 with different releases uh, rates. The objective here is to have, to establish predatory mites uh, together with uh, the two spots as a preventative measure. And uh, the benefits of using predatory mice in combination with sprays uh, can be between one percent and i would just make a really quick graphic description of the losses on a based on a ten thousand boxes per acre uh, yield uh, at one percent we'll at a ten dollar a box per price we're looking at a ten thousand dollar losses at five percent you're looking at a five thousand dollar loss per acre and a 10% loss, 10,000. And we have a cost of $500 per acre releasing predatory mites. It doesn't compare to the yield, to the damages that this two spot does and they can destroy completely. Uh, you know, the, the losses can be 100% if we lose the field more to more than 10%. So $500 per acre investment is really not an expense is really an, an investment. Uh, we also have uh, the benefits that uh, the re-entries are zero days, zero hours, pre-harvest, zero days to harvest, safe for the plants, safe for the consumer, safe for the workers, safe for the environment. It will also reduce spray cost to the grower on miticides let's go to the i will summarize again again uh again and again and again the i cannot stress so much the the fact to calibrate the tractors the spray tractors and to train this the pilots accordingly for both we have if you have conventional tractor uh, or you have an electrostatic tractor we're never going to get a hundred percent kill on both of them with a high volume or low volume sprayer uh, calibrating the tractor that I get uh, 80 to 90 percent kill is a must and I'm have I have my graph here right next to it and we have time on the bo on the bottom and we have percent infection um, on on the high side and this the timing 
<coughs> of the two spot will begin uh, the blue one would rep represents the spider mites and the green one represents the beneficials and normally the spider mites will will start multiplying faster than the persimilus or the californicus as you can see the percent infection over here the two spot can go can get really high then we do a spray and then the population goes down but then the population keep goes up in the meantime the persimmon is still growing at the same time that we're trying to develop a good ratio between the persimmon and the californicus and that requires a strong aggressive monitoring uh, and uh, to so we can figure out what is the ratio between the two uh, the predator and the pest and uh, sometimes I get away with two sprays and the skirt right here uh, reaches 50% predatory mites 50% uh, pest when that happens we eliminate two sprays if we need to continue spraying because the percent infection is high then I keep the sprays sometimes this curve can go higher to a 50% infection but with a good spray we can knock it down so we allow the persimilus in order the californicus to to catch up and uh, clean up the, the the two spot or the Lewis mites it doesn't matter the objective is to do go preventative but the sprays are a must uh, even in conventional even on organic both conventional and organic you have to have the sprays otherwise the, the you know the, the persimilus and californicus to, can't stand the chance and not an even fight the fight is to be able to have uh, 50 uh, two spots that would be a 50 percent ratio 50 percent persimilus or californicus combined then no more sprays i do not i stop spraying then after that especially uh, only on hot spots and we had hot spots either i'd release more persimilus or californicus or uh, I, I i spray again <clears throat> but that was this that's what this graph is telling us the rate to figure out the rates between the predator and the and the pest um, so the the other question is releases uh, and the releases can be done either manually or by drone I had great success uh, controlling spider mice with the drone 100% releases and uh, it, it works fine I, I just uh, with drone releases I prefer by hand uh, but the call would be made by the grower if they want to use drones uh, I, I don't object to that uh, the 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 mistakes would be done that I would not release by drone if the winds are higher than 15 20 miles an hour there's gonna be a forecast for rain or forecast for frost no it's uh, drone applications for persimilus or californicus are great because during the rainy years you can't get in the field and the uh, the application the releases are done and uh, without having to send in people a lot of times we don't have labor available to to release them and so the drones are perfectly fine and for that regard we have also a, a an app from BioBest that we can use uh, the talk to any of the reps and will help you figure out what chemicals are safe and what chemicals are not harmful uh, for when we do the sprays over here to bring down the population of the pest uh, the app that BioBest has will tell us the that if whether the chemicals are going to be 
kill the investment of the pre of persimilis or californicus or they're safe and I, I, sh I went over that list yesterday uh, later on uh, first in my presentation so yes so yeah talk to any of the tech support people and figure out uh, fungicides are safe so some fungicides are, are safe some are, are not as safe miticides uh, insecticides some of them are safe some of them are not I would stay away from Oberon stay away from Agrimec stay away from um, those will if you spray trying to clean up before releasing you have to remember that there's residuals on the chemicals and the chemicals sometimes inside the greenhouses are longer than the field conditions because of the hydrolysis process of breaking down the chemical by the wind and the sun. But it's still overall will require two weeks at least to release predatory if you spray it off with overrun and agrimac as well. So sometimes we say, oh, the, the predatory mice are not working. We don't, I don't see them. It, not that you don't see them, it's the, it maybe that we don't have enough, or you maybe you use the product to, to kill them. So do consult your tech support, and, uh, and you know we're here to answer your questions uh, and uh, call us. Feel comfortable about that. And so we have a situation in where uh, the question would be: Can I would Californicus? feed on persimilis. Well, not really. Californicus is uh, more of a generalist. He would feed on pollen to, to stay, to establish himself. Is not a persimilis, is more specific. Uh, feeds on two spot only. Californicus will feed on pollen, will feed on Lewis mite as well. And uh, so also another thing to consider would be when how well, how soon can I spray after I release or how soon can I vacuum or how soon can I uh, <clears throat> apply dusting sulfur dusting sulfur for example is very important to for uh, mildew control but at the same time <coughs> at a high rates it can it's a it's a miticide so I would keep it on the what around five Five pounds, no more than ten pounds per acre. Uh, as far as spraying, I would like to uh, let le uh, leave around two days before I spray. So let's say we release on Wednesday, we'll spray on Saturday. We'll be fine because they will find um, the the their home and and they live underneath the leaves. So it's just like the two spot. So the, also going back to the sprays, maybe we got to make sure that the tractor is not, uh, I, I don't do any three acres per load. It's going too fast to, to do any damage to a two spot on the bottom of the leaf. And the, the leaves, when the tractor is going too fast, it will get the wet leaves on the top. They check the bottom of the leaves is the dry. And so it's like you're getting a 20% kill and uh, so you're not getting the drop on the population or the good kill and so the persimmon in California is going to have a hard time catching up. Uh, we're going to have a hard time get, creating a balance uh, ratio, balance ratio between pest and predator. And so if you could uh, calibrate your tractor to do two acres per load. Two acres per load are going to be what's, what I get good kills. You gotta go slowly, you gotta make sure that the nozzles are pointed in the right direction. It's about the aim that we're targeting, the bottom of the leaf, and it's hard to get a good spreader sticker. Um, there's good data indicating that there's a product um, best is that is a good uh, spreader. Had uh, shown activity on, on on for two spot, and uh, I started using that. that yeah, 
eh, más o menos, more or less. So I, I would I would do that. Uh, I would try to use the best that you can, best spreader stickers that you can have. So we went over the drones, we went over the hand releases. Uh, some people are more conservative in regards to the rates, but we also have to deal with labor rates. So uh, go, I'm going with higher rates less often just to get them done. But we have to make sure that there's food out there for the for the Californics and the predators. Food, what I mean is there's enough two spot. So a lot of people want to say, I want to I want to spray, I want to clean it up, and then release. Uh, all right, that's not. I, I wouldn't recommend that because you're eliminating the food for the establishment of the persimmons and the Californicus. I'll start early. Make sure that there's one, one between one percent, no less, no more than ten percent. Start releasing heavy, and sprays in the sprays in the middle. Once the program is a program, you don't you don't do it based on calendar. It has to be done in a program. Once you start. The goal is to finish at the end of March. Maybe going into April. But going into April, if we didn't finish the two spot, we're going into liga season. And then, and for conventional, we don't have a lot of liga uh, materials that are good, effective, and, and we have a long season to go. So I'd rather be done with two spot early the end of March, first, second, third week of April, be done with, with four sprays or two sprays or three sprays, but whatever it takes, no more spider mice by the end of, by the middle of April would, would be very, very, very important. All right, well, that wraps it up. And uh, for in regards to the trying to be done with spider mite control as early as March and April. And going over the yield losses, as you can see, it's, 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 it's a no-brainer. Uh, uh, get your orders early, uh, call ahead of time. I know there's a lot of growers that like to request, I need Californicus tomorrow. But they're, you know, we're, we're dealing with a, an industry that we're working with live predatory mites, and we gotta have, we have to deliver consistent quality and consistent quantity every time. So we have to have time to prepare to grow this persimilus and grow California and we can get it to you in good condition uh, so you can release in your fields. Uh, on time and, and get a great establishment for what whatever we need to do uh, to the the chemicals that can be, be used uh, I mentioned Oberon and I mentioned Agrimec uh, as one of the harmful uh, in regards to the fungicides. Most of them are fine, uh, Captain. Uh, talk to your rep to go over that list because it's the rates and then how we use it and the, and the loads that we have per acre. The look at, let's look, uh, learn to use the BioVest app to find out about the side effects of, of the mites, uh, uh, of the chemicals that we're gonna use. So the insecticides, we have to be careful. Some of them are safe. Hopefully we can get um, sequoia available for ligus control pretty soon. Uh, any of the insecticides that would be safe would be for worm, any of the centauris, any of the organic certified would be good to use. I try not to. Yeah, talk to your reps in regards to what products would be would be safe to use. But 
we can we the program once the program starts don't wait because the percent infection can go up to 50 60 percent so we can have we can have 60 percent in spy, infection spider mite and only 10 20 percent persimilis and you're getting freaked out you're getting freaked out and you're saying Ugh. well we got to spray we cannot let them go that high if let's say we spray but we only get a 20 percent kill it's like you know, you know, so the two spider will always going to have give us an edge. Um, the alternatives, you 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 understand what I'm saying? The the program once it starts, if you cannot spray with tractor because it's raining in January, February, then uh, uh, I wouldn't spray for, I mean, for botrytis, for mildew, and helicopter, yes, but not with, not for spider mites. Have to have a tractor we had to get underneath the leaves and control control the 50 60 percent infection bring it down to so the persimmons can can bring it you know can keep it down and, and we can even out the curve uh, uh, recently uh, the water board has made a, a requirements for the water board and as well as the the uh, ag commissioner has May, for using any restricted materials, it's asking us to to fill up forms. To what other products are we going to use as an alternative for um, in, insecticides that can harm the environment and, and go down to the aquifers? So our alternatives are getting where our tools are getting better, using more biologicals. And like persimilis and californicus to co to control spider mites and then for the soil pathogens we're using microbial beneficial microbials like streptomyces bacillus of stilis bacillus pomelis trichoderma harshum trichoderma asperellos there these are very strong tools that we have that are very effective controlling rhizotonia Phytophthora, Perticillium, Pythium diseases that we don't have to use fumigants. I mean, we, we use those on organic certified, so, so they're available. Then this is something where we really need to take a look at uh, very seriously, uh, like we do. Uh, we got to keep the grower in business so they can keep us in business, right? All right, well, have any questions? Uh, have Jose, talk to Jose. Or, or Talk to any of your tax consultants. Thank you for inviting me out to have this uh, uh, this topic of conversation, to be a speaker. Talk to you later. Bye.